Yeah, and this is a bit of a weird question, but are you kind of surprised just how much Bilal seems to hate you? <laughs> um, I am, 100%. For some reason, I don't know what scenario is, is built in his head. Um, we fought first time. Everyone's seen, seen how the fight went. Um, ended in eye poke. Now we're having a rematch. That's where it starts to end with me. You know what I mean? For him, he's kind of built up like a mad scenario in his head where... Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's, just, it's, it's weird. It's very weird. He's, you know, he's, he's bumping into your other. He's popping off. He's saying he's going to do all these mad scenarios to you and embarrass you, torch you is the word he used today. Do you think he's being out of character or do you think he's realised like, oh, I'm going to have to start promoting myself to try and get these opportunities again? Or what, what do you make of his behaviour this week? Um, I feel like he's trying to talk himself in the fight, you know. Um, he's trying to convince himself um, that he's better than what he is, uh, I feel. Um... There's only on, on the way I, I can see it. I can't see what else there is, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's it, really. Do you find it a little bit weird with some of the things that he's saying, considering how he usually fights in the cage, <laughs> considering what he's saying is a little bit... Yeah, different. it's contradiction, right? Like, when has he ever tortured anybody in the cage? But like, when has he ever knocked nobody out? When has he ever, like, he's going to throw me halfway, let me up, look at my brother, let, let me back up, look at my coach. I was like, bro, you, you're, you're deluded, you know? Um, he even came out today and said, that, that, well, not today. I said, that, uh, if he beats me, which he won't, um, he's, he's topping GSP. Yeah, yeah I mean, he's like, his, his boxing coach came out and said he's got the same as his Canelo. He's like, what the hell's going on? He's like, I don't know. I don't know. It's a weird thing, but it is what it is. The first time you fought him, you came out like pretty aggressive, you know, really set the forward motion. Was that because you just saw something in him where I don't feel a threat from him? Or is it because you had been on the sidelines for so long with COVID and all the rest of it? Why did you fight that aggressively in that fight? Um, A bit of both. A bit of both. Um, I was... I just believe I'm, I'm better than him, you know, so um, I feel like I'm, I am level, levels above him and that's the way I fought and that's the way I'm going to fight on Saturday night. I, I truly believe I am levels, levels above him and um, Saturday night I'll, I'll prove that again. He was in here saying, you know, he's better than Kamari, better than Colby. He is. Bilal said that he's better than him. Well, you can't ask my question. When you look at him compared to those two, do you think this is an easier fight? Um, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see, you know. Um... I, don't, I, don't, I think Kamara is better than him, obviously. Um, but let's say, like I said, I, I, I'm taking him serious because whatever he's using to convince himself to be in the fight, I have to take him seriously, you know. But um, we'll see. Uh, so, Sunday morning, um, I'll answer it again. Leon, um, Bilal's team are saying that his boxing is on the same level. <laughs> have you seen? Canelo. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. do you make of that? And just touching on the hatred vibes that he's been giving off towards you you seem the complete opposite you seem like you yeah, care I, less I, I, don't, I don't get it you know what I mean like, I don't wear the, where where it's coming from you know what I mean like, I haven't said much really apart from like bantering and um, for me it's all banter for him it's like he's like, taking it deadly serious you know what I mean so um, as far as the Canelo thing I think that's like everyone knows hey, that's just about, uh, what the fuck you know what I mean <laughs> do you expect him to stand and strike with you for more than a few minutes in the fight or do you, do you know his game like the back of your hand at this point um he might try to you know I mean he won't have much success in it um I think everyone knows his game plan would be to come out and try wrestling um but even his wrestling it ain't, ain't all that really you know what I mean he ain't a, he ain't a fucking Khabib or like a GSP he's Bilal you know what I mean so it's like uh, <laughs> I don't know let's see you mentioned Khabib there Khabib has supposedly come up with a game plan to beat you and Bilal believes he'll do the same thing to you that Khabib did to Conor McGregor and I ain't Conor McGregor and he ain't Khabib you know um, I mean like you can't use Khabib to credit yourself you ain't Khabib you didn't grow up with Khabib you probably trained like for a little bit that's about it you know what I mean I've trained with Khabib before you know what I mean what, what does that mean it means nothing you know what I mean and he's using another man's work to gain confidence off his work but you didn't put that kind of work in you know has your opinions about Khabib changed at all throughout this you nah, know, within no, well, helping no. Bilal and helping Islam who wants the belt that you've got right there as well um, no no I, th I think it's still one of, the, one of the best fighters to do it you know and um, that's it Right here. Um, when in the lead up to this, you know, Bilal's used phrases like he's going to fifty forty two you. Uh, uh, he's like he's 
predicting like these dominant decision wins when you oh, this, like if it was me yeah I'm like gonna go like mad deluded and shit and just talk random shit but like yeah, I'm going I'm gonna fucking knock this guy out and like cut him up and like you want violence in it <laughs> if I could like dream any scenario in my brain I will dream violence I wouldn't dream fucking going to decision you know what I mean? There's just weird like thoughts that's going on. Yeah, right. Well, you also called him the least intimidating person in it is, the entire is. UFC. And he is, he is. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> he is. Like, there's this zero. The, like, on a, but let's say like we're in the street and I saw Bilal Muhammad. I wouldn't be afraid of him one bit. You know what I mean? And that's how I look at it. Like, he's not intimidating one bit. You know what I mean? And that's it. What happened with this run-in with you and him in near an elevator or in an elevator? Um... That I was going up to, to, to floor three, uh, opened, he was like standing right there in, in, in front and I think he thought in his head that I wouldn't, wouldn't have came to the lift. So I walked straight into the lift and said press number three and, it, and that, that was it. Um, came out, then it's weird because in, in the lift it was mad quiet and then after the lift opened everyone's outside, he's like ah oh, pussy blah blah blah. I was like bro why did you say all this in the lift when it says in the lift you know what I mean but I don't know. Well, he also said he was sizing your brother up in case he hopped over. <laughs> like, the, uh, oh, God, that's funny. Um, and, uh, <laughs> one final one for me, unrelated to this fight. I don't know if you saw, but on November 1st, they're going to introduce these new rule changes they approved with 12-6 elbows will be allowed, and they've redefined what a grounded opponent is. So I'm curious, what do you make of these new rules uh, that... Um, I think it's good. If it, cause like, what's the if can do this and every, everywhere else, why not just add that one in as well? Um, so yeah, I think it'd be good to start training that and adding that to my toolbox. I love el elbowing anyway, so that'd be that'd be a lovely little tool to add. Leon down here. Um, after your win over Colby, you said you set your sights on becoming the greatest welterweight of all time. Obviously, surpassing GSP's uh, nine title defenses. Um, the way the divisions lined up, there's contenders like Shavkat Rachmanov, there's Ian Gary, there's Jack Della Madalena, and stylistically, you could argue they're better than the fighters that GSP yeah, won in his prime. Definitely. Um, so, does this kind of make Bilal somewhat of like a? Uh, Unwarranted, but a necessary pit stop in in the journey to becoming the the best welterweight. No, I feel like all these fights are important. You know what I mean? Um, like Bilal will count just as much as me being Shavkat, me being Ian. You know what I mean? Because when it's all said and done, when, it's, when I'm looking back, and I, I'm on like a ten fight defense streak, he's even part of ten. You know what I mean? So you have to take him serious, and um, I am. I, I did in camp, and yeah. And do you think he's made any improvements since the first time you fought? Obviously, it was like nearly three and a half years ago. Um, I believe so. I believe um, a, little, a little bit of improvement. But I feel like skill for skill and just the way his habits are, he's still, he's still the same habits. He still made the same mistakes that he did when we first fought. And, um, and I feel like my fights that I've had have prepared me better than what he, he's had, you know, and that's it. And I don't know if uh, you said you've seen him say some crazy stuff. Um, he also said that he might deliberately lose the first round to lure you into a false sense of security. What's your thoughts on that? It's Bilal, eh? It's Bilal, isn't it? <laughs> Bilal. Being Bilal, I guess. Um, so he's going to come out, lose the first round, and then what? Uh, torture you, apparently. After, after the first round. After he lost the first round. Okay. Leon. Just here, mate. Um, but just going back to what his coach said about him looking like Canelo on the pads. <laughs> when you're looking at him striking, it, does anyone pop to mind in terms of he doesn't look like Canelo, but he looks like so, someone else on the pads? Um, who's a shit boxer? I don't know who a shit boxer is. Tom, no, <laughs> Tom is a good lad. Um, I don't know. I don't know. No, nah, I think Jeff Paul knocks him out in a boxing match. Just pure boxing. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. That, was there any like sympathy for Bilal obviously he was in a similar position to you where he's on this long winning streak and he's kind of knocking on the door for the title shot and he couldn't get it was there any sympathy no not really it? not really I got no sympathy alright the game is a game eh? no one had sympathy for me <laughs> when I was going for my shit you know what I mean so no not really I talked to you about that trick shot the other day um, it, it kind of went everywhere you kick, you're kicking the basketball but how did that come about just going for a morning jog and um the ball came towards me, kicked it, and went in. <laughs> so normal day, lads. I don't understand what. What are you trying to? I was about, I was about to say. So it kind of has like you remember the Ronaldinho um, advert. Was it for Nike back in the early two thousands where he yeah. hit the crossbar? Was it? Was it real? Was it? From, my one was real. I don't know about Ronaldinho. Fair play though. 
if you had missed, then you would have essentially just kicked that geezer's ball like a mile <laughs> exactly away. Exactly, and carried on jogging, you know what I mean? So, this is what it is. <laughs> Leon, I'm just wondering, being from Birmingham yourself, in the main event, I know you visited... From Birmingham yourself, God. <laughs> you visited Villa Park earlier on. This is the summer now. There would be no better time to do it at Villa Park. I know Diana doesn't necessarily like doing it outdoors in the UK. Yeah. Do you think it will ever come to Birmingham? If so, when? Yeah, 100%. Um... I keep defending my belt, and um, obviously I'm, I am the, the the guy. So why not? You know, what I mean, like Villa Park would be perfect um, to to have that in in the summer. You know, what I mean, I think UK deserves a stadium show. We, we haven't had had one yet, so um, why not? You know. Um, on the Schmo, Bilal said, and I quote him, I don't think they're fans of Leon, they're just fans of having a British champion. I don't think they're really Leon fans when talking about the English fans. Bilal, Bilal also says that the UK fans are going to support him more than me. You know what I mean? So um, I think just, he's just, like I said, talking and just trying to convince himself. Um, I don't know. Why, why are we trying to tell himself to make himself sound better than what, it, than what he is, you know? Leon. Um you were given custom shorts by the UFC, right here. Uh, you were given custom shorts by the UFC. Uh, when did the UFC come to you with, with that, and did you have any part in the, in the design? Um, yeah, um, in training camp, Hunter Campbell uh, messaged me and obviously sending send me ideas, and I kind of sent him like, the, the Jamaican football jersey, the new one, and said I'd try and make it similar to that one. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what they did. And uh, three and a half years ago or so, you were removed from the rankings for inactivity. Now, fast forward, you're the UFC welterweight champion. You're the number four pound for pound fighter in the world. Talk to me about how crazy these last three and a half, four years have been. Um, it's been crazy. Um, a crazy, crazy journey, you know. And like I said at the time, like, I was the only, only one that, that believed in this dream. You know, I, I was the only one that, like, even the media was going against me and everyone's going against me. And I'm the only one that stayed solid and believed in my dream. And now here I am living it. You know, and everyone else now jump, jumping on board. You know what I mean? So, just make for me anyway that journey that I've went on. I I, I probably wouldn't change it for the world. Cause I feel like it made me a better martial artist, um, physically and mentally. And I think that's the reason why I can come into fight week happy. I can come to fight week um, myself because that's who I've been this whole time. You know, this that's uh, there's. I'm happy, you know what I mean? There's, there's no pressure. I don't have to like keep up a character or anything. Just be myself and yeah, just keep dominating. And uh, my final question your last three fights have been against uh, wrestling based fighters in Kamaru Usman and uh, Kobe Covington. Where do you see Bilal maybe having a different kind of style t to them that he could uh, pose a threat? Um, I don't think it'd be different. It'd be similar because eh? the, the Kobe's is boxing wrestling. Um, Kamaru is boxing wrestling. Really, the kick, but not really. The more boxing wrestling, below same boxing wrestling. The kicks, but not really. Um, is the attacks as far as wrestling goes similar? You know what I mean? So um, I, feel, I just feel like my path to to this rematch is better prepared me for the rematch more than his path to the rematch. You know what I mean? For Burns, that was injured. Who else? Luke, who else? Wonderboy that's 60 years old so Damon Maya said 60 years old so all the people that died is for Luke is I think everyone knows kind of over the hill now he had a great career but if I Nate Nick Diaz next you know what I mean so um, yeah I feel like my path was better find the pound pound number one guy at the time Kamara Usman um, not just the fight just the camps is what, make that, is, what, is what make you better you know what I mean and to have these back to back camps has improved my game overall, you know. Leon, Leon back here. Yeah. Uh, in order to become champion, you have to overcome what we would call a burn moment, which is just a really tough time in your life. So what do you think is your biggest burn moment that you had to overcome to become the welterweight champion of the world? Um, in my career? Just career, life, just in general. I go, go, I go career. Um, I don't know, probably like the, 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 the second Ozone fight. Um, Going to Salt Lake City, our attitude, um, use all the training attitude, winning the first round, body going like getting, getting effective from that front attitude, and then staying focused until the last round and getting to finish over the pound pound number one guy, and then coming back and then beating him again in the rematch. I think just that probably, I'd probably say.
Leon Clement, Clement. Clement. just ask about yeah. um, obviously you've been in Bilal's position how does preparation for a fight change if you know being the challenger and obviously now being the champion um I don't think it's, it's, it's changed much you know what I mean I've been headlining before I was champion anyway um as far as the work goes in still five fives um I don't think it change, changes much. I, I I don't believe, you know what I mean? I, I just believe that um, if, if, if it's already a headline anyway, now you just fight for a bout. It's more pressure, obviously. I don't know if it's for him or for me, but it's probably more, more on the line, more pay-per-view points, more money, more all that. More, there's more on the line, but as far as camp goes and the work goes, um, I think it's all similar, you know? And obviously, you know, since the first fight, you've gone on to do great things. But has that no contest obviously been hanging over you, like for Saturday night, obviously, as well as, you know, your third title defence, will it be an opportunity to kind of close that chapter and kind of silence Balao once and for all? Yeah, 100%. Um, either when I missed on my fucking my streak, <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> crying. Um, but yeah, I feel like going out there Saturday night, um, finally shutting them up and um, just moving, moving on my career, just add, add to it, you know. Leon at the back here, mate. All right, pal. Um, recently, we spoke to MVP, and obviously, I know that his last fight wasn't, it didn't go as planned, but he said that a fight between you and him would be like massive for British MMA, especially as an inspiration for where you both uh, come from. Yeah. Would you entertain that at any point, and what would he need to do to get that fight with you? Win first day. Eh? <laughs> <Like, laughs> um, he probably would have, you know, like, let's say he did go out there, battered um, Ian. Probably one more beat Shav Cat, then that would be massive in the UK. You know what I mean? But I feel like he's, he's left it too late to make the move over to UFC. I wish he did it a bit earlier, you know. And um, does it make it to title contender? I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of tough guys in the division. Um, Ian, Ian's not a great wrestler. You know what I mean? Ian, I grapple you. Ian ain't strong. And Ian, I grapple you. You know what I mean? So I feel like. I don't know. I don't if know. if it's say if he was giving it just to make the fight massive in the UK, like almost when people say some people don't deserve it, would would you be happy with it or if they want to give him a tarsh shot now? No, not now on a loss, obviously, but like if he was to get a good couple of Yeah, if it, let's say it does go out there and like I said, beat these guys, that's like meant to be next, then obviously it's gonna be one of the biggest fight in UK history, you know what I mean? So um but you have to put the work in to get to get there. You can't just say uh if I was fucking fighting Mike Tyson, it doesn't matter. You know I mean, you have to actually go out there, win the fights, get yourself in a position where you can fight for the toll, and then this fight will be massive. You know what I mean? Leon down here. Um, I don't know if you saw Bilal when he went on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. He opened up as to... Oh, fuck. There goes my camera. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, Oh, I'll leave it. Jesus, someone else, go on. Uh, no, he, joking, he, joking, basically, joking. he basically explained the reason why he was so emotional because he'd obviously previously had eye surgery in there and he said that he couldn't see. Um, what's your what's your react, reaction to that? Because we've not actually had the chance to speak to you about that. I, I, I haven't heard that um, before. Um, what? No, so he said that he was so emotional about it because well, he... While crying? Yeah, yeah. Because he'd previously injured his eye and he thought that he was going to be blind. Yeah, but if you get punched in your face, let's say, uh, I don't know. Fair enough. And to to uh, off, off topic, obviously your brother's got a big fight coming up in September fourteenth. Yeah. Uh, how do you think that rematch goes? Um, uh, I think Burrow finishes him. I think his his improvements in the gym is looking <laughs> solid, you know. So, um, I'm I'm excited for him to go out there and achieve his dream, to become the world champion. You know what I mean? And he got long left. Is September twenty first? I think. Fourteenth. Yeah, thing. one of them. Um, and he's looking great, you know, so I'm, I'm excited for his, for his career and what he's achieving. And as a Villa fan, how buzzing were you when Oli Watkins scored that uh, winner against the Netherlands? Um, I, I was very happy. Um, I'm more like a UK fan, to be honest. I enjoy, like, international football. <laughs> so I was watching, like, this camp was, was great because obviously the, the thing football was on and um, I was having people like that just representing... Um, that represent Villa and Birmingham and, um, yeah, it, it was good. Cheers, man. Are you going to be celebrating your win um, despite the time difference on Saturday or um, Sunday morning? Um, I don't know. i got like a house. So i probably like a, like, I don't know, a little breakfast for brunch. <laughs> um, I don't know. I wish it was like a bit more early, but probably like a little breakfast brunch and get all the boys around, get some pancakes and go from there. Thank you. Uh, 
Islam Akhachev wants your belt, it's not a secret. If you will win on the Saturday night, is when, there any oh, single chance? When I win on Saturday night, well, go oh, Okay, so is there any single chance that you will fight Islam in October in Abu Dhabi? Um, I don't think it'll be October, because yes, he spoke to me about nothing or even hint that way, you know what I mean? Um, but this year? This year, I don't think it happened this year, but I think eventually if we both keep going out there and winning and dominating our divisions, then that's a possibility, you know. Um, for, for me, my own path, I'll, I'll like to get also get a second belt and moving up to middleweight. Um, I think I'm, I'm big enough to do that, and that's one of my dreams to go out there and do that. Um, like I said, I want to top GSP. GSP has won and won the middleweight strap, so I feel like I have to do all these things that he's done to con for me to consider myself the best world over all time, you know. So. Um, yeah, if Islam happens um, eventually, then it, yeah, is what it is. Um, but like I said, from my own path, my own journey, I'd like to get me a second bout.